Now, when it goes through, it's just leaving the stomach, the food. We're just going to follow it down through, just kind of like Fantastic Voyage. As soon as it gets into the um, jejunum and ileum, which are the next two structures around there, Imagine on the inside of it, there's all these little pili, okay? And what it does is it increases the surface. So if you want to get a huge amount of surface area, okay, in a short space, what you're going to do is you're going to fold this up, down, up, down, up, down, just like this. So even though the intestinal tract's only, let's say, about a dozen feet long on average, if you fold up those pillows, those pili, and stretch it out, it's miles long. So this is why your digestive tract takes, has a tremendous amount of surface area because any time, and this is how food gets into your bloodstream, it literally pierces the wall of that intestine, gets in the vein, and goes directly to the liver. Now this has um, huge consequences. Have you ever heard of leaky gut syndrome? Okay, do you want to know why most cancers are in the upper left quadrant of the chest? Yeah. I'm glad you asked that. Okay. okay, let me tell you why. First off, if you look at this, you're talking about nutrients, antibiotics, drugs, everything has to go through this wall of this intestinal tract into the venous system. However, some drugs are caustic, antibiotics in particular, can actually pierce the wall of this intestine and cause a thing called leaky gut. Now, this intestinal tract, you have an enclosed system. Um, there's no open veins or arteries. So now this antibiotics can actually pierce the wall of that colon and leach bacteria and bad stuff into that gut, stuff that shouldn't be in there. Well, lymph system drains that gut. Now lymph for the gut drains to the upper left quadrant. Lymph for the chest drains to the upper right. And this is like the sewer system of the body. So if you see swelling over the left clavicle, you can say, wow, a little bit of diarrhea, a little upset tummy. If you see swelling over the right clavicle, you could say, oh, a little chest cold. So that's where lymph drains. Now, if you take multiple antibiotics, according to the American Journal of Epidemiology, it increases your risk of cancer. So now, are antibiotics life-saving in certain circumstances? Yeah. Our population, 50% of it is getting cancer now. So obviously, we're doing too much of that. You shouldn't be taking an antibiotic unless it's a life-threatening illness. And this also says um, anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, Motrin, and Advil can also increase your risk of cancer. Does it do it through the gastrointestinal tract? Yes, it does. That's why I, you might think that my crew is obsessive, but when they say, oh yeah, I finally had a breakdown and take a Tylenol, they turn white as sheets and go, what? Don't you know the alternatives? Okay, because we have half a dozen alternatives to get rid of that. Now, our Food and Drug Administration, which is supplying us with a safe food supply, we can actually go up to... Okay. okay, maybe not. I'm just guessing that perhaps we could go up to any shelf in any grocery store, blindly pull something off, and know it's safe for us. No. Okay, it doesn't work that way. So now we got to take charge of our health. This is not called health care. This is called self-care. You take care of yourself because you're the only one responsible. Okay, this is throwing the tea in the bay. I'm not waiting for any government health plan or anything else. We take charge of our lives now. This is poisonous. We don't put it in. If there was truth in advertising, hot dogs, okay, unless they're range-free, hormone-free, and nitrate-free, are deadly. Diabetes, soda pop, acrylamide trips, yeah. But remember, what does it do when you put it in your mouth, when it gets in your stomach and has those chemical reactions? Devastating. Because everything goes through these veins. You gotta remember, everything that you put in your mouth drains into these veins, and these veins drain directly to the liver. And the liver is the enzyme factory. This is huge. If you put these materials into that stomach, it goes through these veins, gets into the liver. The problem is, or the solution is, these are loaded with soluble fibers. They're loaded with lycoprenes. They're loaded with antioxidants. They're loaded with phytonutrients that can actually increase your immune system and make it work better. It's a good design. Now, this is interesting. Vaccines, do they affect your GI tract? Yes or yes? Yes. Huge. What's amazing is um, this guy, Dr. Wakefield, found out that kids with autism have um, bacteria or viruses, measles virus, in the gut, 75 out of 91 patients. 
when if you look at it in people without autism, it's like 3% of the population that have it. So he's starting to associate GI tract overreacting or causing that measles virus to grow. So they have a hypersensitive GI tract. So it's not just the vaccines that cause it, it's vaccines along with hyperactive immune system tract. So what they're now starting to think of, it's obviously the vaccines are implicated in autism, but it's also, was the kid put on antibiotics in the first year of life? Okay, for ear infections. And luckily they stopped that insane practice. Now, <clears throat> let's look, because I know I'm giving you a two-year doctorate in anatomy in 30 minutes or less. Okay, so we're gonna back up a little bit, but I want you to appreciate what this structure does. Now, <clears throat> the spleen, we haven't talked about that, because some people wouldn't even put it in the gastrointestinal tract system. I would. Do you wanna know why? why it's important. <laughs> okay, it has to do with all the structures in there. Now again, I'm going on the theory that your body's intelligent. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're already looking at a structure that's amazing, that's designed to break down nutrients to rebuild your tissue. Do you realize that your skin is 28 days old? 28 days. It's constantly being rebuilt. Your blood vessels are around 120 days old. They're constantly being rebuilt. Your bones are about 90 days old. They're constantly being rebuilt. If you put poor building materials inside of your body, you're gonna get a poor product out. Okay, you, put, you take Fosamax for strong bones, you're going to get Kmart bones. There's an increased risk of, of fractures. Okay, so you don't want to build bones with drugs. That's ridiculous. Let's look at the spleen. <clears throat> the normal human being has around 6 million red blood cells. They last about 120 days. Do you realize that this spleen, every 20 minutes, checks each one of those blood cells? Checks each one to see if they're viable, if they can still hold oxygen. The ones that don't, it takes those blood cells out of the circulation and puts it back in to the liver. And the liver breaks down these bl red blood cells into different proteins. It breaks it down into blood proteins and forms bile out of it. Now bile is huge because bile is gonna drain or drains or it stores in the gallbladder. Now, again, a lot of people think I'm obsessive, but when somebody says, oh no, I just had a couple operations, had my appendix out, my gallbladder out, my mouth drops down to the floor and says, oh my gosh, have you done major diet changes in order to handle or tolerate the, the deficiencies that are going to be from ripping that vital organ out? They look at me and say, no, my doctor never told me anything. Understand, this is, this is huge. Your spleen breaks down those red blood cells, passes it over to the liver. The liver breaks it down further and forms and concentrates bile. What bile does is it helps you break down fats emulsifies fats. Now fats help you produce certain hormones, makes your hair lustrous and silky, gives you fantastic skin. So if you've had your gallbladder ripped out, you have to be really conscious of intaking your fats. Your, your liver is still going to be secreting bile in to help you emulsify it, but it's not going to store and concentrate it, it's just going to be slowly leaking in there. So you have to increase your fat intake, so that's vital.